Welcome to another edition of RCE. I am Brock Palin. You can follow me on Twitter at B-R-O-C-K-P-A-L-E-N, and we accept questions, and I post shows when they're up there, too. I also have, again, Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems and the Open MPI Project. Jeff, thanks for helping me out again. Yeah, you also post on your Twitter whenever you're mad at your Sprint account as well, too. Oh, uh, yes, yes, I do that, too. Something like that. <laughs> Uh, hello, everybody. Jeff Squires from Cisco Systems, and um, you can have a look at my blog. It's out on uh, blogs.cisco.com. It's the performance blog. I talk about MPI and general HPC things out there. Always willing to hear your comments and questions on there. And we have uh, a link to that off of the RCE webpage at rce-cast.com. On there, you can see a form of all the shows we've done, get old shows. Subscribe to the iTunes feed or the RSS feed or download an MP3 directly uh, for you know, putting on your phone or other mobile device. Uh, you can also nominate other show topics on there. We're always looking for new things that you know neither one of us are aware of, and we'd like to hear from what you guys would like to hear about. Yeah, we we always love to hear from the, from the fans because uh, you know every once in a while uh, someone will come up to me or I'll get a random email and say, "Hey, love the show." And so uh, you know we love to hear your feedback, what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and if there's anybody in particular you'd like to hear from. So uh, you know, give us a shout out on the yeah, blog, actually, on Twitter, email. Y- you ran into a, a fan at the Open Fabrics conference, right? You, you That's just right, got back last from? week. It's actually a guy I've known for a while, but I had no idea he was listening to the to the podcast. Uh, colleague of mine down at oak ridge and oh. um so yeah it was kind of cool no that's always that's always neat to hear about that so uh and also good to know that you know you're, you're still keeping up and feeding everything from open fabrics and everything else so <laughs> yes the day job keeps me busy <laughs> yes okay well let's go ahead and get to the topic today we have the condor project uh, at the university of wisconsin but we have an interesting mix of of people here we have um greg thane who is um, at the University of Wisconsin, as well as Jason Stowe, who's from Cycle Computing. Uh, curious to see how they're affiliated with the Condor Project. Guys, why don't you take a moment to go ahead and you know, state your name and introduce yourself. Good morning. My name is Greg Thane. Uh, I'm a software engineer at the Condor Project at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Uh, I've been with the team for about five years. Uh, I work on what's called the Condor Flightworthy Group, the sort of core Condor group. I've worked on a number of different uh, aspects of Condor, including uh, the parallel universe and uh, a lot of performance tuning and other parallel uh, applications on top of Condor. I uh, got a bachelor's degree from uh, the UW uh, longer ago than I care to admit, but uh, went off into the wild world of, of startups, but then came back to, uh, to Madison to do uh, neat distributed computing stuff. Hey, Brock and Jeff. Uh, I'm Jason Stowe. I'm uh, founder and CEO of Cycle Computing. We got started uh, also about five years ago uh, with Condor. I actually worked at a, a Disney movie that used Condor to render uh, all the frames of a feature animation, and from there decided to start Cycle to help uh, companies be able to take advantage of uh, Condor's full feature set. Um, I actually knew, knew Greg since uh, since about the time he got started, and we're uh, uh, one of the two official kind of corporate partners uh, of the Condor team, helping out with new features and uh, uh, helping users kind of start using Condor internally uh, in their own environment. Okay, so can we get a uh, description of what Condor is? Um, you know, it's resource manager, scheduler, kind of describe. Uh, sure. Um, so Condor is kind of a lot of things, which makes it sort of confusing to explain in uh, a brief soundbite. Um, uh, I think sort of the, the one thing that holds it all together is uh, Condor is a, a set of software to uh, implement the idea that we call uh, high-throughput computing, uh, HTC, as opposed to uh, what a lot of people think about in the supercomputing world, HPC. So we, we really think about the difference between uh, high-throughput versus high-performance. So Condor is um, uh, a bunch of programs, a software stack, to implement high-throughput computing. So the core of this, what everyone knows, is the Condor Job Manager, which is um, a batch scheduler like uh, many other batch schedulers. But there's um, several layers of uh, software on top of that that um, uh, leverage the scheduler and interact in different ways. Fundamentally, if you look at it from a from a user perspective, Condor helps uh, 
describe on a policy basis uh, what should be running uh, across this high throughput environment. So it's it's uh, I like the analogy Greg's used before around uh, a sprinter versus a marathon runner. Uh, Condor definitely favors the marathon runner viewpoint where you want to maximize the utilization of resources over a long period of time. And uh, essentially, Condor provides resource allocation where it figures out exactly what should be running where uh, in that high throughput environment. I've also heard Condor described as a cycle scavenger, um, something basically you put in labs and kind of recover wasted resources uh, in places besides traditional clusters. Is this a good description of it, or is this just like one of many things Condor does? That's kind of the way Condor got started, and a lot of people sort of still know us mainly as a a cycle scavenger. Um, It fits in with the bird motif. Um, In the early days, um, Condor only ran on, on desktop workstations. And we would uh, scavenge cycles when the machine was idle. And um, it's kind of interesting. We started out, uh, I think our first platform was, uh, was the Vax um, running Ultrix. And, um, <clears throat> you know, those machines were very slow, especially by today's standards. And people were very concerned that um, if Condor was running a job on their system, it would absolutely only run when it was completely idle um, by their definition. And their definition of idleness would change um, a lot. So this really drove us to implement very flexible policies for implementing cycle scavenging and allowing the owner of the resource to determine what idle was. Um, it's not entirely um, obvious what idle means to any particular person, so we need to implement a lot of flexible policies to do that. Um, and this is sort of the way that, that Connor got started. And it's still, um, even though we've grown a lot and we do a lot more than, than simple desktop cycle scavenging, um, it's really part of our DNA. And uh, something interesting, I think, is that um, this idea of uh, what we call opportunistic computing uh, is really still applicable today, um, though perhaps on larger scales. We're not necessarily scavenging from desktops or or from vaxes, but you can apply this at different scales. You can scavenge um, from a a cluster or from a campus. So um, even though uh, this desktop cycle scavenging is, is just a small part of what we do today. Uh, the idea really lives on um, in all kinds of different uh, different ways. And it's a very applicable idea that um, can be used in, in uh, a lot of surprising different ways. And, you know, Greg, the, the, the second part of that, too, is that not only do we, um, uh, I, I guess in our observations, about 60 to 70 percent of usage is actually on on dedicated resources and not on harvested uh, resources, we prefer to call it harvested as opposed to scavenged. Um, the key, the key aspect of this, though, in addition, there's also new platforms to be harvested as well. So we've been seeing use cases where we take VMware clusters, where VMware is great at server consolidation. It allows you to, uh, you know, remove physical hardware footprint. Um, but at the same point, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get the most resources out of the hardware that's running your VMware environment. And so deploying Condor into those kinds of uh, virtual machine pools is actually a great way to increase utilization of the underlying hardware that you've, you've deployed. So it's, it's not just that there's, there's uh, different scales, but also different environments entirely nowadays, especially uh, for doing harvesting, where that policy management capability that Condor has is very, very helpful. Okay, so that was uh, that was interesting. There, you you actually use the pronoun "we," uh, meaning that you guys actually work together with um, University of Wisconsin. So, could you guys could you describe what your relationship is, and you know how do you guys work together? Are you all core developers, or you know what 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 are the roles? Right. So, Condor is an open source project, and um, like many open source projects, we we reach out to the community. We we can't do it all ourselves. We're uh, very happy to get. Um, contributions back. And uh, I think Jason and Cycle is one of the first uh, first corporate companies to uh, donate code back to back to Condor. Is that right, Jason? Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, we've, we've definitely been actively involved uh, in trying to add new features where we see users uh, want them. But, uh, but we also try to supply the beer during Condor week every year as well. Other than that, uh, uh, I think we're most 